And as flights have been canceled all across the Sun Coast and beyond, we are honing in uh, to our Sarasota Bradenton International Airport to see exactly what is the latest with the flights out there. Yeah, Brissa Bradfield live by the terminals and Brissa, they stopped all flights at 7 o'clock and it's a ghost down there. There's nobody there. You're there by yourself. No flights now. Yeah, Narisa, there are no flights, there are no people, like you said, ghost town. Really the best way to describe it, if I step out of the way a little bit, this is something very rare to see. Not a single soul at an airport. I think I said it before, but it's very eerie, very spooky almost feeling here. And inside, I believe we have some video that um, is going to come up on your screen. But inside here, I can see through the windows, the doors are locked, but they have tarps over all of the ticket counters. They have saran wrap over those uh, machines where they print out your ticket. If you did not know the airport was closed and you showed up, you would definitely know the airport was closed once you got here and as we know Tampa International closed at midnight St. Pete closed today at three o'clock and like Narisa said Sarasota did close here just at seven o'clock tonight now they are hopeful they say they will open up tomorrow at 8 a.m. but that is pending any damages um, they still have to assess that come tomorrow morning but it looks like for departures there is a jet blue flight taking off to JFK that was originally set for 10 7 a.m. and that has been delayed until 10 52 a.m. So we have some hopefuls, and hopefully they will be able to take off tomorrow. But then it is just a bunch of canceled flights until then. And it looks like there is a flight that is still on time that will take off towards Charlotte. That is at 1.41 p.m. That is American Airlines um, flight. So hopefully they will be able to take off on time. But as you can see, it really is just a ghost town here. The parking lot, though, like always, it is filled with all of those flyers that were able to take off before this airport closed down. But Marisa and Rick, it really is just quiet here tonight. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen SRQ like that, just right. so quiet. But, uh, Brissa, are you hearing anything about the passengers? Were they there, like, up until 7 o'clock? And what they do? Uh, you know, where where they go? So I, I'm really not sure. I can't answer that question. Um, I got here a little after 9 o'clock tonight, and somehow they all got home. I'm not sure where they are, but they are not inside of this airport. I can tell you that. Um, those doors, they are locked. They are closed. And so if you do have a flight, uh, you're wondering what's going on with your flight, the best advice, are they telling you what, to, what, what do you do about your flight? Hey, I missed my flight. Hopefully it's going to go out tomorrow, right? Yeah, so if folks do have flights scheduled out of SRQ or even into SRQ tomorrow, um, they are being told to check with their airlines as opposed to the specific airport. Check with your airlines, whether that be Southwest, Jet, JetBlue, United, Delta. Check with them to see what time your flight is and if it is still on time. Fortunately, it's just delayed one day. So, yeah, and, yeah, let's and, hope it stays that right. way. And Brissa, stay safe out there, stay dry, and at least you have the overhang there too. So yeah. hopefully that's helping. <laughs> yes, I'm very lucky. Thank you, Brissa. Thanks, guys. All right, looking ahead as we track Hurricane Adalia, we uh, depend a lot on our eyes and ears on the Sun Coast. Uh, that's you, our viewers. Yeah, but remember, safety first. If you are in a safe spot and you want to share some photos, a lot of you guys taking photos, but we only want those photos if you're taking them safe. Photos and video. So you can send them to us. We've made it easy. All you have to do is pop on over to mysuncoast.com, head on to the Share It tab, and then you can upload your pictures or video with a few sentences, of course, describing the content you're sending. Yeah, we have been getting uh, lots of pictures and words and images from out there, so we do appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, and also everything you know, need to know about the hurricane season and how to be prepared is on our website, mysuncoast.com. Just check under the hurricane tab. We also have our hurricane eye of the storm survival guide. We have much more ahead for Hurricane Idalia. All of our coverage continuing. So don't go away. We will be right back. Heater's broken? Always on time. Or you don't. Pay a dime. I'll call one hour. Always on time, or you don't pay a dime. How do you spell selection? G-E-T-T-E-L. That's right. Gettle Automotive Group is your pre-owned destination with over 1,200 pre-owned vehicles starting at $38.88. Plus, we're paying up to 120% of KBB trade value. Gettle's got it.
Daniel Cameron says it's... One of the first things I will do as governor... Bringing back former Governor Matt Bevan's ruthless Medicaid plan, threatening to take away coverage from over 95,000 Kentuckians, punishing working parents, putting rural hospitals in danger of shutting down. This sounds very similar to something that Governor Matt Bevan tried. Well, absolutely. Denying people coverage, devastating rural health care. Something that Governor Matt Bevan tried. Well, absolutely. Cameron's absolutely wrong for Kentucky. Updates on a dog. Turn up that heater, folks. It's going to be a cold one out <sighs> the there today. The heater's broken? Always on time. Or you don't. Pay a dime. I'll call one hour. Always on time, or you don't pay a dime. How do you spell selection? G-E-T-T-E-L. That's right. Get a automotive group. It's your pre-owned destination with over 1,200 pre-owned vehicles starting at 3888 Plus, we're paying up to 120% of KBB trade value. Get all's got it. Again, to check in with the chief, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. What you got now? You know, what I got is this, 110 mile hour wind. This just came in. Now, the National Hurricane Center is going to start issuing these every hour now. So we'll get advisories and updated details on the storm as it gets closer to the coast. They do that when the storm is going to make landfall into the U.S. and it's uh, imminent and it's within uh, 12 hours. So uh, we do expect it to jump status and become a Category 3 major hurricane. Most of the damage associated with hurricane occur from three, fours, and fives, obviously. Uh, but once you get to three, you start to see structural damage. Two, you don't see the structural damage, but threes you do. Uh, and in the intensity of the storm and the damage potential goes up exponentially. It doesn't just go up one category. You think it maybe oh, it's a one times greater in terms of destructive force. No, it's a 60 times greater in destructive force as it moves up the scale into the categories threes, fours, and fives. So a dangerous, a catastrophic storm headed toward Florida into the Big Bend area, and it's going to make a storm surge up to 15 feet high if it hits at high tide there. Uh, thankfully, it's off the coast of us, but we're still under uh, these watches and warnings right now. And it looks like we may have some changes with some of these watches and warnings. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get a closer look to that. It looks like it could be midway through uh, Longbow Key again. Uh, these are going to be changing now uh, every hour as we go through time now because the reconnaissance aircraft gets a little bit better information. No, it is from mid to Longbow Key, still in a, again, hurricane warning there and a tropical storm warning south of it. We have seen tropical storm force winds. Look at the rain coming down right now. We're just going to it. This is out at Anna Maria Island. I'll step out of the picture right there at Cedar Cove, and you can see the wave action really getting high now uh, just beyond that rainfall uh, that is coming down in sheets uh, as uh, these feeder bands are moving on in, and those waves are uh, coming real close to that sign. You can see it right there. Uh, earlier they were out here and now those waves are getting closer uh, to that sign there. So hurricane warning, as I mentioned, big waves. Uh, three to five foot surge that may be coming down somewhat at the 11 o'clock advisory. Storm surge warning is still out. And uh, once again, now we're starting to see that rain band spreading on into Lakewood Ranch as the storm center gets a little bit closer. Again, here we take a closer look, get down to street level. And that's the reason why we suggest not to be driving in this kind of situation. Uh, you see a heavy rain at Siesta Key, Sarasota downtown, also now right there near Lakewood Ranch with more rain on the way along State Road 72 and near Clark Road. Uh, Leslie, you got more to say about the watches, obviously, and it's getting kind of crazy across parts of the Sun Coast. Yeah, especially right above you. It, you can see in, in the radar there behind Bob, Skyway Bridge uh, really getting hammered right now, and we've got reports of winds about 40 miles per hour, and they 
will shut down the bridge when it's 40 miles per hour. Now, I just checked the FHP site. They have not done that yet, but you can expect it to likely be closed quite soon uh, because the winds are, are pretty intense at this point. Uh, we've also gotten some reports of winds, you know, over 50 miles per hour up at Albert Witted Airport up in the Pinellas County area. So we're getting tropical form, uh, storm force winds as I speak. Now, just a quick reminder as we talk about these watches and warnings, uh, tornado watch, of course, in effect. We have been mentioning this, and this will go in effect till uh, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning everything in the yellow <laughs> pretty much you could just slice down uh, the middle of the state and you know head west and that's what we're covering here and then we've also got this uh, little marine statement down here as well so keep that in mind and that just means it's possible that some water spouts will come out here back to you Bob thanks Leslie here's a look now there's a little lull here after we get this heavy rainfall you can see it on the live sweep of the radar uh, but this is gonna fill in so expect more storms to develop and more rapidly too as we see this center pretty much parallel parallel now with Tampa Bay as you move it off and into the west. Now that's going to head north, but all these still are going to fill in here as that pressure has lowered uh, considerably. A full-blown report, new cone, but uh, we know where it's going right now. It's going to the Big Bend area of Florida as a major hurricane. Unfortunately for those folks, they are going to see some uh, destructive force up there. Uh, catastrophic damage expected. Uh, Narisa, Rick, back to you. All right. In Bradenton, thank you, Bob. Uh, in Bradenton, stores were filling up with people today. They were all preparing for the hurricane. And all those people uh, meant supplies. We're really uh, running short. ABC 7, Sophia Vitello joining us live with more information on the supply situation today and updates on store reopening. Sophia, what can you tell us? Hey guys, the situation was pretty chaotic today, but also the day before we were facing some serious shortages. Today was a little crazier because water was really just gone. I mean, those aisles were a ghost town, mainly in the Bradenton Walmarts. There was some water left over in Publix, but Publix did close a bit earlier than Walmart. That's why people were really cattling over to Walmart. But, you know, the main thing to remember here is what do I really need for a hurricane? I mean, guys, for the most of us, I feel like, let's be honest here, we survive off two Cokes and a bag of chips a day. So you don't need to be buying the whole store. You just need the basics. You need some water. You need some non-perishable foods. You need some batteries, maybe some candles. You know, think basic. If you can't get everything, it's going to be okay. I spoke to some Floridians who were in Ian, and, you know, they told me they didn't get a whole bunch of stuff, but they still lasted, and they really adjusted their plans for this year because because of their experience from last year. Now I have some updates for you. If you are missing supplies and those roadways are safe, safer tomorrow for you, Target will be open at 10 a.m. Publix also expected to be open at 9 a.m. Not sure about Walmart. So, you know, try to hit those two stores and just do the best you can and stay safe, especially if you're up north. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. Uh, lots of empty shelves out there and right. lots of rain uh, there but behind, Sophia. But at least the stores will be open tomorrow, some yep. of them. Okay, we'll be right back. Turn up that heater, folks. It's going to be a cold one out there today. The heater's broken? Always on time. Or you don't. Pay a dime. I'll call one hour. Always on time, or you don't pay a dime. How do you spell selection? G-E-T-T-E-L. That's right. Gettle Automotive Group is your pre-owned destination with over 1,200 pre-owned vehicles starting at $38.88. Plus, we're paying up to 120% of KBB trade value. Gettle's got it.
Welcome back. Tonight, we do continue to update you here on ABC7 with the latest weather. We are also adding information to our website and social media sites. And as we keep you updated, we are asking you what you are seeing right outside right at the moment. And we asked our ABC7 WWSB Facebook page, what's the weather like where you are right now? ABC7 Summer Smith joining us live from the newsroom with a few of the viewers' responses. Summer? Hi, Narisa and Rick. Well, it's been a very busy night here at ABC7. And as our viewers stay safe at home, riding out the storm, many are turning to social media to give us updates. Sue Byron saying rain is getting serious now. Sarasota near Beneva and 12th Street, pretty ferocious lightning. We have draining flooding challenges, so crossing fingers, it's not steady like this for hours. And Wendy Provo saying downpouring in wind gusts in Bradenton, and here's the thunder. 41 in Cortez area. And Sissy Care White saying very stormy, sideways rain and wind and thunder and lightning too. I'm in West Bradenton. And we'd love to hear how the weather is where you are tonight. Keep us updated by visiting our Facebook page. That's ABC7 WWSB. Reporting live in the newsroom, Summer Smith, ABC7, your local station. See you back here at 11. Before we head to break, this is our ABC 7 First Alert traffic camera of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. We are hearing that it should be closing any moment if it hasn't closed yet because of the winds. Very windy conditions out there. But at this time, uh, oh, uh, the bridge is still open. That's uh, what we're wow. hearing the latest. Okay. All bridges in the state will be shut down eventually. So um, just stay home. It's safe. We'll be right back. The problem with pillows is that you're trying to fit a round peg into a square hole, or rather a pillow-shaped peg into a shoulder-shaped hole. This is Sydney. Hello. Look at the space between her head and her shoulder. It's a square. None of these rounded pillows are going to fit that space perfectly. What Sydney needs is a pillow that properly supports her neck and keeps her spine in alignment. Hence, the pillow cube. So stop wasting all your money on these fancy new mattresses and get the pillow that will support your noggin. Buy the pillow cube today and you can join our happy dance.
waiting on the next full-blown advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Should come in within minutes. We'll have an update on MySunCoast.com right here, too, on ABC7. And there could be some changes in the watches and warnings. A lot of times they don't like to make some full-scale changes quite yet as that storm is still raging out there in the Gulf of Mexico. But notice the motion and movement has been almost due north over the last several hours. And that is a good sign for us here. Bad sign uh, for the Big Bend area into northwest Florida. Heavy rainfall now and dangerous lightning. Strong gusty winds moving in and around Venice and also now into Lakewood Ranch. We'll take a look and closer look and show you. Yes, uh, it is getting pretty hectic out there. We heard some of the uh, folks uh, writing in and uh, saying the rain is coming down heavy in Bradenton, northwest Bradenton, Palmasola, Anna Maria Island, a torrential downpour happening there. Rainfall rates up to two inches per hour into Lakewood Ranch and uh, right around uh, Fruitville and I-75 and all this heading to the north. Northport also getting some rain and this is starting to fill in even here. We got a little lull but uh, that'll pick up fairly quickly as we move through. This uh, marine warning has been out there for over an hour and a half now. That continues and as the winds go, we've been checking this with the velocity. Get a look at that. 58 miles an hour. There's 60 and as you go further north, 62 right there. So things are really starting to get interesting and they'll stay that way uh, throughout. The but the good news is, Leslie, is that we're seeing tropical storm force, not hurricane, uh, and, and that's going to stay that way too overnight. Yes, uh, it, it, we certainly prefer to have that. Yes, and we do need some rain. We are in a, an intense drought. We're about 18 inches below where we need to be. Uh, we'd like to get it in other ways, but we'll take what we can get. A little bit of a silver lining. Look at this. These are the watches and warnings and advisories here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and zoom in for you, and you can see we again have a, a hurricane warning that's still in effect here uh, through. Friday for the Manatee County area. We're getting hammered right now with the rain, as you just saw uh, with Bob on the radar. Tropical storm warning in effect for Sarasota, DeSoto, Hardy County, and even Charlotte and Lee County and further to the south. And a storm surge warning. This is a big concern, and we're keeping an eye on this. And this goes all throughout the, the Suncoast area from Inglewood all the way up uh, beyond the Skyway Bridge and uh, actually over into Hillsborough County. So um, as I move over to the marine warning, as Bob said, it's been out there for a while and uh, over an hour at this point, and that means that some water spouts could pop up in general. But we are under a tornado watch. So now's not the time to go outside. Obviously, the weather is pretty bad. And I just want to talk about uh, tornadoes for a minute. You know, you really just want to plan, have a plan. If, you, if you're here for one, uh, if, if we tell you one is in the area, you just need to really be prepared. And you should do practices. You know, they, they make us hide under desk and do things like that in school. So it's good to have your family just be cognizant of what to do when a tornado comes. Know where to take shelter. That's the key thing. And usually uh, those are in those interior rooms and away from windows and so forth. And also download the ABC7 First Alert app, the First Alert weather app. Download it because we have a special sound uh, that will let you know uh, when there is a tornado. That's right. And you think about it, uh, Leslie, uh, sometimes you don't want that alert and uh, alarm uh, going off. But tonight you do. You want to have that set on and turned on uh, for notifications when it comes to the these uh, tornadoes that can quickly pop up. So uh, this is new. I want to show you this new advisory now. This is the full-blown 11 o'clock advisory showing the pressure now down to an incredible 658 millibars. It's moving to the north at 18. That's good. That means it's not going to have as much time over this very warm water here. But look at this. A new symbol, as I said and suggested, this could be a Category 4 hurricane before it makes landfall. So this is the big news tonight uh, with the 11 o'clock advisory now projected to be a major Category 4 hurricane uh, with winds in excess of 125 miles an hour. So we're expecting 130 mile an hour wind gusts. And we'll see, I should say, wind sustained with gusts up to 140 to 150. Now, the same thing was said with Michael when it made landfall in 2018. Uh, and then it went to a five. So this is a, a devastating kind of storm, too, because it's gaining strength as it makes landfall. And those are typically the worst kind uh, because they carry a lot more energy with them than one that's dissipating. So uh, 958 millibars expected to go even lower. We're going to have hourly updates, although this is a, the next advisory. We'll have an update uh, at uh, 12 midnight at 1 o'clock. And then again, a, a little bit of an intermediate advisory at 2 a.m. Looking at the watches and warnings. Now, this would 
would be populated too uh, if things changed, and it hasn't. A hurricane warning remains in effect from the mid part of Longbow Key uh, all the way up to the Big Bend area, and a tropical storm warning remains in effect south. So that's the new advisory. We're going to have much more, obviously, coming up at 11 o'clock on our full-blown newscast. But something to take note uh, with this new advisory is that it's going to be a Category 4 hurricane, it looks like, and could go. Uh, even higher than the 120 mile an hour wind or, or that you see right there, 125 mile an hour, 130, I should say. Uh, but then there's the forecast. It's going to sit out there for days in the Atlantic, it looks like, um, uh, through the weekend and beyond. Those waves, they are really picking up, too. Uh, 33 feet uh, right there near the center and close to coast here. Uh, we're talking up to 10 foot waves right now, but those will get even higher uh, through the night. Uh, of course, we're going to take a look uh, again at the full scope of this, getting better organized, more storms around the center. We'll have much more coming up at 11. You want to stick around with some important information. We'll be right back. As the Dahlia approaches our area, trust ABC7 first alert weather to keep you informed. Scan the QR code to track the storm and get updates on the ABC7 first alert weather app. Stay tuned to ABC7, your local station, for new information as we track Adalia.